my name is Dr. Allie Baumgartner and I am the Paleontology Collections Manager here at the Sternberg Museum of Natural History. And today, I'm actually going to be talking to you about animals and plants, of course. So today I'm going to be telling you a little bit about one of my favorite fossil localities, Florissant Fossil Beds National Monument. So though that is not a fossil locality in Kansas, we do have a good deal of the fossils here at the Sternberg Museum. So I'm going to give you a little bit of the history of the formation of the National Monument and the discovery of the site, and then we'll talk a little bit about the things that we can learn about the actual fossil time um, from the things that we found from Florissant Fossil Beds. So, Florissant Fossil Beds is a, now a national monument in Florissant, Colorado. So it is in the front range of the Rocky Mountains. It's about an hour and a half west of Colorado Springs. It is right down the street from Pikes Peak. Full disclosure, I was an intern at Florissant Fossil Beds National Monument. So I'm a little biased, but one of the really cool things about that internship was that from my desk I could look out the window and see Pikes Peak. So there has been fossil collecting going on at that locality since the 1870s. Basically from the time that uh, settlers were coming out into Colorado for homesteads, there were people collecting these fossils. There have been many books written on the fossils from the Florissant Formation from the 1870s and 80s and 90s and all the way through into the 1900s. So there's been a lot of work on this site since it was first discovered, uh, first uncovered by the settlers in the 1870s. Uh, in 1883, um, some enterprising individuals tried to remove one of the petrified redwood stumps from the locality. So they knew that the petrified redwood stump, which it's a redwood, it's big, they knew they wouldn't be able to take it out all in one piece, so they tried to use saws like you would use on a normal tree to cut it up into pieces so they could take it out in parts and then reassemble it. Uh, that didn't work, and so they got parts of their saw blades stuck into this rock that was once a tree, uh, and you can actually still see them there today, which is kind of neat. Uh, in 1887, the railway came through next to the Florissant uh, Formation outcrops, and there are these amazing pictures of people in their Victorian outfits getting off of the, the train so that they could collect uh, these fossils. It was privatized in the 1900s. Um, people bought the land, owned the land, it opened up a series of uh, petrified forests so people could come in and look at the redwood stumps and see the, the fossils from the locality. One of my favorite stories about this time when the locality was privatized is in 1956. Um, so a little boy named Toby Wells, his family um, owned the property and a man from California came to, f to the uh, petrified forest and wanted to get a tour. So Toby showed the man around and at the end of the tour, <laughs> the man from California asked if he could talk to the man in charge. So Toby took the man from California to go talk to his dad. Uh, it turns out the man from California was Walt Disney, who bought one of the redwood stumps and had it shipped to California, where it is now still on display in Frontierland in Disneyland. So, um, in 1969, the locality was made into a national monument, and this was a while in the making, there were a lot of paleontologists and scientists in general who were really interested in making sure that this site was going to be preserved for the long term. One of the main people in pushing for the um, Fuller's Not Fossil Beds to become a national monument was Estella Leopold, the daughter of Aldo Leopold. In fact, Estella still does research at Florissant. Uh, she does a lot of work with the um, with pollen and palynology. So Estella has been part of Florissant from the beginning. So that's the history of Florissant, how we went from settlers uncovering these fossils to it becoming a protected national monument. But what do the fossils even look like? So, 
let me show you. First, I'm going to be talking a little bit about um, the animals. So Florissant fossil beds was a late Eocene site. It is about 34 million years old, um, so it's basically the very end of the Eocene, and it was a lake deposit. It was called Lake Florissant. So it was this lake deposit that allowed us to preserve um, things like this. Insects that are very small. You have to have these very fine grain sediments in order to have this level of detail preserved. So that shows a couple of insects. Here's another little insect. You can see all sorts of detail. It's really interesting because even as someone who doesn't personally work on insects, I can look at this and realize, oh, that looks like something you can definitely find today. You can find things like little flies and bees. It's really, really neat. If you ever go to Florissant fossil beds, there is the, uh, a wasp called Paleo Vespa that is on the sign. It's absolutely beautiful. So in addition to the fantastic insects, there are also much bigger animals. Uh, anything that can get preserved in the thin layers of the paper shale, so it can be birds, fish, anything that might get stuck in the lake. Um, over time, the um, fossils, uh, the, the fossil bearing layer uh, was replaced with just a valley as the, the lake drained, and that's where the stumps were formed. Um, so the stumps were living in the valley after the time of Lake Florissant, but as often happens in the fossil record, there was a local volcano that erupted, and part of the lahar that came through basically burned off the tops of these redwood trees, but preserved everything that was below ground. So that's why we have these really exceptional uh, trunks preserved because even though the top of the tree was burned off, everything that was below ground was preserved and basically instantly buried with a layer of volcanic um, overflow. And then over time, the lake filled again. And you ha in both of these uh, lake deposits, you'll have the insects, but you'll also have things like plants. And obviously, as a paleobotanist, this is the thing that I am most excited about. So. The plant material from Florissant is absolutely exceptional. It, if you weren't paying much attention, you might think that this was you know, a decaying leaf that had just fallen on some limestone. It's beautiful. And we can look at these and actually understand a whole lot about the environment that these plants were living in. And we get a whole lot of, of different types of plant organs that are preserved. So it's not just leaves like we'll get in a lot of places, but as you can see here, we've got the stem attached. And that can actually tell us a whole lot about the plant. And in addition to that, if you talk to a botanist, you know, leaves are the worst way to, to identify a living plant. But paleobotanists, that's often all we get because seeds and flowers are ephemeral. They're only around for a little bit. But we even have seeds and fruits and flowers from Florissant, which is really, really exciting. So by putting all of this information together with the fruits and seeds and plants and animals, we know that the time of Florissant fossil beds was a, tr a warm temperate environment to subtropical environment. It was much warmer and wetter than uh, that part of Colorado is today. It helps us get this really cool snapshot because very often you don't have plants and animals preserved in the same layers at the same locality. So because we have all of these things in the same place at the same time, we actually can be pretty high quality time travelers in understanding what Florissant, Colorado looked like about 34 million years ago. So thank you for tra time traveling with me. I hope to be able to tell you about some other really cool fossil localities in the future. And thank you for joining us. Thanks for joining us in A New Way to Museum with the Sternberg Museum of Natural History. If you enjoyed this video, like it and subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell for notifications when we release a new video. Support us on Patreon for early access and exclusive content. You can also follow us on all our social media. Links are found in the description. Thanks for watching and follow your curiosity to new discoveries.